All right, so here we are in Minecraft. Uh, today we're gonna do another video just covering how to create a Minecraft server, a modded Minecraft server. We're gonna cover everything from installation, settings, uh, ports, and stuff like that. Uh, how to get the mods on both for the server and the client. The main, whole main reason why I did this originally a couple of months back was to just pretty much get a better understanding of managing a Linux server. And I thought what better way to do that um, than creating a Minecraft server for me and my friends and family. So with that being said, let's get right, right to so it. So the first step is gonna be checking the Java version. Uh, so Minecraft server for 1.8 or 1.18.1 does require Java 17. As you can see here, here's the reference. So to easily do that, you're just gonna go ahead to your terminal and check what is currently installed. So as you can see here, we have OpenJDK 17. Um, but if you didn't have that one installed and you had another one installed, you would go to the website, install it, and then in order to change it, you would just run this command. This is going to tell you what, oh, sorry. This is gonna tell you what is installed currently on your system. And then you're gonna take this path for Java 17, and then you're gonna run this command with sudo. And then just put the path. I already have it, so I'm not gonna do it again, but that's how you would set the current version. Um, and then you would have Java 17 version uh, running. So the next step is going to be to download the actual Minecraft Forge server. So it's gonna go ahead to the website, minecraftforge.net. Uh, the whole reason why I went with Minecraft 1.18.1 is because of that most recent vulnerability for the Log4j. Uh, so with this client or with this server, it does patch that so we don't have to worry about that as much. So go to the website, download the installer. All right, now that we have downloaded the Minecraft server, we're going to go ahead and move it from the downloads folder into our folder or directory that we're going to run this server. So we'll just go check it out and see where it's at. So we're just gonna move that or copy it from downloads directory to the current directory. All right, so now we have it in our current directory and then we're just gonna run the Java command. So after running that command, it's gonna pop up the uh, the GUI to for the mod system installer. I'm gonna go ahead and go to install server. We're gonna change the directory to our current directory to install that server inside of. Okay. And then just let it run. Easy enough. So after the installer runs and does its thing, Go ahead and check out the directory. As you can see, we have a few things here. We have a log for that uh, install, some libraries, a bat script, and a uh, bash script, along with this text file. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is edit the run script. So we're just gonna go ahead and use vim. And as you can see here, it says that we could add custom JVM arguments to the user JVM arguments, or you could also just pass them directly to the script which we'll go ahead and just do that now. So adding those two arguments, we'll do a set a minimum for the RAM for four gigs and then the same thing for max for six gigs. Go ahead and save that. Now when we go ahead and run that script, we will notice that it, um, it stops running the script because it says you need to agree to the agreements or the, um, yeah, the agreements. So we're just going ahead and Go ahead and see that it creates that file. So we're just going to vim again. And we're just gonna set this to true. And then we're just gonna run that script again. It's also gonna create um, a few more things. Or we could go ahead and just do the mods now. All right, so after setting that to true and saying that we agree, we're gonna go ahead and run that script one more time. It should create a few more files, such as the server properties and a few other things that we'll cover in a minute. All right, so after running the script a second time, uh, as you can see, it pops up the Minecraft server 
This is going to be the GUI, which we could get rid of if we wanted to. I just left it as a default and let it open up. Um, but in order to join the server, we're going to have to change these server properties files, which was now created after running that script the last time. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to end the server by pressing Control C. It's going to save the chunks, generated a world, which, gonna, which we're going to delete anyway. So we're going to list out the contents of this directory. As you can see, it had created the server.properties file. So let's go ahead and we're going to go in there with Vim. All right, so a few things that we're going to look out for. There's a bunch of different options you can go ahead and play around with. Uh, the biggest thing that we want to play around or to change is going to be the IP address and the uh, server port. So the server IP, for now, we're just going to leave it at our local IP address. So you just go hit I for insert, and then we're just going to change it to 192.168.1.52, which is what I have set up for this virtual machine. And then the port, that's the default port. I always just change the default to reports and stuff like that. So I'm just going to change this to 666.22. All right, then we're just going to go ahead and save and exit. And you could also see that it had created this world directory. So that is the everything, all the chunks and everything like that put into the world. Uh, so we want to go ahead and remove that before we load our mods because some of those mods are going to have um, some generating features and stuff like that. So obviously we want to get rid of that so all those mods get into the new world. All right, so after we go ahead and get into our mods folder, as you can see, it's currently blank. There's nothing in here. There's a few ways to go about this. Uh, for me personally, I downloaded everything on my Windows machine because I have to obviously load it on the client side, which we will not be covering in this video. And then from there, I created a Python server, HTTP or HTTP server, which would look like something like this. You load the module HTTP dot server and then the port number. I don't even know if I have, uh, okay, there it is. I mean, I just did a crazy port there. Hold on. There we go, so 8,000. Uh, so really, if we were in um, our downloads folder or whatever folder we want that had like a, a zip file of all the mods, we could just go ahead on our, on our Linux machine or on our Windows machine, download that file, and then extract it into our mods folder. That's the easiest way to go about that. I already have all the mods installed from my actual Minecraft server, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that over to this folder. All right, so I went ahead and I downloaded all of the, or copied all the mods from my actual Minecraft server and just put it into this server now. So as you can see, these are all the mods that I'm gonna be running. So at this point, all we have to really do is we're gonna go back to the home directory of this server, which has all these files in it. We already edited the server property, so we have an IP address and a port number for this server. We added the mods. We got rid of the um, world folder. So it is gonna be a new world. And then all we have to do with the very minimum is just run that script again. It will load all the mods. It will generate everything that we need. And then the server will be up and running. As you can see, it's going through here. It's, it's finding those all those mods in that mod folder that we just had. And it's gonna just do its thing automatically. Not much uh, we have to do here. It does take a little bit, especially for the first um, iteration of creating this world and loading all these mods. Um, thereafter, it does get a little bit slower or a little bit faster, I should say. But yeah, so we'll just wait until this is done and then we'll just go see uh, if we can join the server. All right, so for whatever reason, that took a little longer than anticipated. I think it is because of the beta version of the launcher and server and stuff like that. It had a few glitches. All I had to do was just restart it and it seemed to work. All right, so the world has been created. The server is up. Um, one thing I had to do is the, I didn't realize that I put the a port number higher than the max port. So for instance, if we go back into the server properties, I had this at like 66,000. Obviously that's not gonna work because the max port that you can use is like 65, 535 or something like that. So I changed it to 6222. And then, uh, yeah, so now we should be able to join the server. So let's pull up the Minecraft client. All right, so at this point, we have the client open. I have already added the mods previously uh, for the client side. It is already added from my previous server. So all the mods are already in there. And it's also in my server. So all we have to do now is just go into multiplayer. We're going to create or add a server. 
going to put in our local IP address for my virtual machine. And then we're going to add the port number, which was 62222. And there we go. Awesome. One thing I did want to mention that I had messed up, uh, I totally did not think of the UFW or the firewall that I had running on my server. I did not allow the port for this video. So I had troubles getting into the server at first. So I just want to go through this real quick to maybe help you if you ran into this in the future. Um, so just to show you, you'd run the sudo ufw allow, and then you allow the port. So it'd be 6222. Uh, we'll just make a brand one so I can show you the actual when we allow it. So we'll just do two or three, 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 three. All right, so now it's saying that the rule was added. And then if you wanted to see that rule added, you just go to sudo ufw status ports that are open on this server. Okay, this is a virtual machine, so none of this matters here that you can see today. Um, it is not connected to the internet or anything like that. So also what we can do is see if that port is open. So if we were to go ahead and UFW deny, and we'll do uh, that port we just put on there. So now that is no longer there. As you can see, it is denied or it's blocked. So if we were to run nlab for that port to see if it's open on this server. Oh, sorry. It should say closed, there you go. And then if we were to do it on the port that we're on now for the actual Minecraft server, You see that it's open and that's all you want to see all right but as you can see uh, we had the server running or the Minecraft server running we are on there on the client and it looks great uh, as you can see we're obviously on top of a tree right now not sure how that happened it's pretty crazy but this is 1.18 .1, and it's just running flawlessly now we have all those mods on there as well all right well that's going to conclude today's video today we covered how to install the Minecraft 1.18.1 server on Ubuntu and we also covered uh, the various settings, configuration files and how to get mods on there and some tips on how I moved the mods from one from the Windows to the Linux machine. In the future I do plan to do at least one or two more videos covering some scripts that I had created. Uh, both of them are written in Bash to just um, perform a status check pretty much making sure that the server is up and running and if it is not up and running to get it up and running and then another script that would restart it every night at one o'clock in the morning and create a backup so this way um, at the end of the day there's a backup being created and so all right so that concludes today's video we'll just kill this zombie and we will end it with that as always never stop learning